Oi, time for some more damage model testing, this time in response to quite a lot of feedback from the first video. We're doing some air-to-air -air testing. I'm only going to be firing the Mark 108 cannon. I'm only going to be firing that at the wing of a couple of aircraft, the Spitfire and the 109. And we're trying to look at what damage a single Mark 108 round will do when it hits the wing. Okay, try that. All right, firing shortly. Whoa, right, okay, I've got suppression. Suppression. You're on fire. Uh, yeah, the engine's gone a bit okay. too lally. I can still so move left and right. Yeah, I've got lots of blast damage all the way down your right wing. Right, That's... okay, I can't use the cannons. Right, I mean, it's clear that you're smashed, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a... Oh my god, yeah, I am on fire. Although yeah. the fire is coming from the rear, not the engine. Yeah, it's coming from just underneath behind the cockpit. Okay, let's try again. We'll do one more, just to get a couple of samples. Closing on guns range. Oh yeah, right aileron's gone. Yeah, aileron completely came away. Similar damage by the looks of it as what I saw last time. What's it looking like in cockpit? It's just normal, but just can't steer right. Okay, and that aircraft is flopping all over the place when you let go of the stick, is it? Yeah, watch. Oh yeah, jeez. Okay. <laughs> What happens if you pull back on the stick? Oh. <laughs> oh, you're in a spin. Okay. So a single cannon round to the Spitfire wing will pretty much knock the aircraft out completely. It's basically useless in both tests we did. Okay. It's a hit. Yep. What have we got? Slight, slight damage on the right wing pixels. Okay. Still, everything else normal. Everything else normal? Maneuverable? Yep. Yep. And if you pull back on the stick, does one of the wings suddenly want to drop, or does it nope. allow you? No, nope. if it's okay. normal, it's just a visual. Oh, hang on. I've lost my engine. Your engine's out? Yeah. Okay, so the blast somehow has managed to cripple your engine. Yep. And I think I've put a hole in the radiator, so it's possible that some fluid or coolant or something has got not going to the engine. It looks okay from here though, your prop's still spinning. Have you just got really low RPM, have you? No, I've got the throttle on full. Okay, oh yeah, you're going really slow. Okay. Yep. Alright, well, I can't see you uh, surviving in combat, but you'd be able to maneuver out the way if you absolutely had to. Let's do another test then. Gotcha. Oh. Right, okay, uh, I've got instrument damage. Instrument damage? Oh yeah, blast all on the side of the cockpit. It's looking pretty messed yeah, yeah. up actually. Uh, so my, uh, my climb indicator isn't working. Uh-huh. You've hit my flaps. My right hand flap. But I'm still manoeuvrable. Yep, still fightable. Let's see if that engine goes, because you are trailing some... coolant. A very thin stream of coolant. Temperatures in that seem okay. Flaps still work just for. Uh... Okay, try some maneuvering, and I'll follow you around in a turn or whatever, and just see how if yours can, you know, if mine can turn just as well, or if you're suffering for turn rate. It looks like you're turning pretty well. Yeah. I'll go left. Yep. I 
you know, seem to be losing a lot of speed in the turn, but that might be because you've got lower engine settings. But yeah, okay. It looks like there's no real effect on maneuverability. Level again. I'll try and put a second round in that wing if you just get level, and we'll see if that first one was just a fluke. That first round, kind of missing, let's say, anything vital or landing too close to the trailing edge. It seems to me that because the Spitfire surface area is a bit greater and you can actually see more of it from the rear aspect, the rounds on the Spitfire might be hitting the centre of the wing, whereas the rounds seem to be just hitting bang on the trailing edge on the 109. So um, I have to try and aim a little bit further in board, but then I risk hitting the fuselage. Oh, Ooh, okay, I've got some. It's you're right, you're on fire. Pressured. Yeah. Yeah. Oh That's God. much better. I think it's um, the rounds that are hitting right on the trailing edge are not causing nearly as much damage as a round which is hitting more centrally on the wing. That's really, really caused a lot of problems for you. That looks just like the Spitfire. So yeah, I, to be honest, I think these very, very similar in terms of response to the Mark 108. The occasional round might just hit and not be totally catastrophic, but pretty much 80-90% of the time, a single Mark 108 round to the wing is going to be catastrophic. As a wee bit of a summary to these initial tests, I'm fairly happy with the final result of these aircraft being hit by the 108 cannon, which is the heaviest air-to-air -air cannon we have available. The final result is that these aircraft are combat ineffective or completely inoperable once they've been hit once or twice by these rounds. And I think that's a fairly reasonable outcome. There are some questions, though, about how we get to that outcome, whether, one, the visual damage is representative of how devastating these weapons might be, and two, whether we should be seeing more total structural failure. Now that point about structural failure is best summarized by a comment I saw on Reddit, which I'm going to read. The comment is this, there are good improvements to system damage, bad changes to frame component damage. Ailerons take a lot more to get taken off, wingtips don't get broken off, Shrapnel damage is hugely increased, but mainly the lack of airframe breaking alone makes it worse IMO. So the question for me then is, how often should we expect to see these kinds of aircraft losing their wings or their wingtips or having the fuselage snap in half or the tails come clean off? I decided to do a little research. Now, this is a non-scientific methodology, but I think it helps give us some kind of flavor. I looked at a number of YouTube clips which are showing gun cam footage from the Second World War. I've ignored all of the attacks on four-engined aircraft. I've ignored duplicates where it's obviously uh, they've duplicated the same attack more than once in a video or across videos. And I've tried to ignore attacks by American aircraft which are carrying the 50 cal machine guns or early war British aircraft which didn't have cannon. Out of a total number of gun cam attacks, I counted 72 that met my criteria. And of those 72, nine of them appeared visually to result in this kind of structural failure we're talking about, wingtips, wings, fuselage breaks, that kind of thing. In quite a few of those cases, it was actually the secondary result of an explosion. Now, whether that's a fuel tank going up or oxygen tanks going up, it's unclear. But So nine out of 72 is the total. Then I looked through a number of combat reports from 1943 onwards, and I actually read 91 of these. Of those 91, 11 of them mentioned the loss of a wing, a wingtip, or the tail coming off, something like that. So that's 11 out of 91. Now you'll notice that in both cases, the ratios are almost the same. 9 out of 72 for the video stuff, and 11 out of 91 for the combat reports. Overall, I've got a figure of 20 out of 163. 
So we're looking at somewhere between 10 and 20% of attacks with Canon should, given kind of a, a summary or a survey of World War II uh, documentation, provide us with a failure of a wing or a wingtip or a fuse large snapping. So I think that kind of can be used to temper our expectations a bit. Then I started having a look to see if I could explicitly take the wing off a 109 or a couple of different airframes. So we're going to just have a look at that footage now and then I'll talk a little bit more about the results at the end. In this first video I'm trying to put about a one and a half second burst into the wing of a 109. It's flown by the AI but he only takes a few seconds after the hits to kind of wobble a bit and then go straight into the sea. You'll notice that in this case the wing did not sever and in fact I tried this about 10 to 12 times with the combat mix in the gun and I could never get the wings to actually come off at any point. During the 10 to 15 tests I did, on two occasions I did manage to get the tail to come off. So here's an example of that happening. You'll notice that this happened after a significant amount of structural damage had already been inflicted on the airplane and long after it had caught fire and the pilot had bailed out. As a last resort, I decided to see if the ammunition type had any impact. So I loaded up the high explosive ammunition combination that's available in the mission editor and flew again and here's the results with the HE. You'll see that the tail section came off very early on indeed, however still completely unable to get the wing to sever at any point. I subsequently conducted a few more tests with the HE only ammo loadout and I was unable to get the wings to come off with any attempt and the tail came off about half of the time. So with respect to the wings apparently not coming off, there's quite a lot of variables that need to be taken into account here. I'm going to try and talk these through as quickly as possible, but this might get a bit droney and long-winded. The first aspect of this is that the wing spar, according to Eagle Dynamics, needs to be severely damaged in order for these wings to separate from the aircraft. The wing spars tend to be located in the forward half of these wings. This means that hitting them from the rear isn't really that simple. The high explosive rounds are going to generally explode on impact and with these kinds of attacks I was doing in this video, that impact point is going to be on the trailing edge of the wing and in fact not near the spar, the main spar or in some cases the secondary spar at all. This is also why we saw with the HE rounds the tail section of the aircraft was taking the bulk of the heavy damage because the rounds were exploding on contact with the trailing edge of the wing. Eagle Dynamics have also indicated that the blast damage from the HE shells tends to be most effective against thin metal below 20 millimeters thickness. And in fact, one of the famous photos that goes around showing the Mark 108 shell demonstrates this quite clearly, where the thin sheeting metal on the aircraft's skin and the smaller thin interior parts are severely damaged, but the thicker main spar parts of the aircraft are in fact largely untouched by a shell which appears to have impacted quite close to that spar indeed. I don't think we're going to start seeing wings coming away with these HE rounds being fired in the way they were in this video. In my opinion we're going to need to be using armoured piercing rounds and it's going to be a case of a number of those rounds landing on the wing spars and severely damaging them in order for these wings to separate. That said, I do think there is an argument that we should be seeing some more 
visual damage on the skins of these aircraft from the HE explosions. However, for me, that is a cosmetic issue, which is secondary to the main mechanics of how these rounds are causing damage. So a summary then of the entire video. Firstly, is that I think the results of 102 Mark 108 cannon hits, at least to the wing, is catastrophic in almost every case. And that's what I would expect. Secondly, there is potentially some scope for ED to increase the visual representations on the skins of the aircraft from these high caliber rounds. However, for me, that's more of a cosmetic thing and is not so important. Thirdly, we did observe this catastrophic structure failures with a low percentage of the cases where we fired one to two second bursts. And when we had the HE rounds only, then we saw the structural failure almost immediately with the first or second round hitting. And that was the tail coming away very quickly. With respect to wings, Detaching, I think in order for that to happen, we're going to have to hit these aircraft with large numbers of armoured piercing hits and damage that main wing spar. So the HE cannon rounds landing on the trailing edge probably isn't the way to achieve that result.